We're going to talk about body mechanics. Uh, body mechanics is one of my absolute favorite topics to discuss. Why is that? It has to do with placing your body into the strongest position possible in order to absorb and deliver energy. Why would it be important for us to put ourselves in as strong a position as possible to absorb and deliver energy? Let's think about fighting. If you have someone who is striking at you and you're trying to strike at them, that's exactly what you're doing, is delivering and absorbing energy. Uh, and with body mechanics, if we have the appropriate body mechanics, we can do that as efficiently as possible. So let's go ahead and get into this. We're gonna go ahead and start from the ground up, literally. What we wanna look at is the positioning of our feet. Here you see I have my feet completely in line. This is not an ideal position from the standpoint of body mechanics and having your body in as ideal a position as possible. What we wanna do is we actually wanna be in a staggered stance or what is known as a fighting stance, if you will. How do we get into a fighting stance? What we wanna do is we wanna take our support side uh, foot and we wanna go ahead and place it just in front of our dominant side foot. As you can see, when I, when I put myself into that position, the heel on my support side and the toes on my dominant side are in line with one another. And I take those feet and I go ahead and put them about shoulder width apart. Now I say about shoulder width apart because your body may be a little bit different from my body, shoulder width apart may look and feel a little bit different to you. Uh, so there's really no set way from the standpoint of knowing exactly where your, pos your ideal positioning is uh, shoulder width apart. What would be incorrect, definitively incorrect, would be having them so narrow that you have no side to stop or you have a very limited side to side stability. We don't wanna have them too narrow and underneath us. We also don't wanna to go to the extreme and have them so wide, and now we have pretty good stability, but guess what we've just given up? We've completely given up our mobility. In order for us to go mobile, we need to make a shift. So we wanna be somewhere in the middle with that initial uh, baseline fighting stance and having our, our feet positioned appropriately. So now that we've talked about our feet, let's go ahead and roll up to the hips. Why are we discussing the hips? Well, you'll notice one of the things that happen when you put yourself into a fighting stance is that you actually open up the hip on your dominant side. And when you open up the hip on your dominant side, you're pulling or dragging your natural point of aim, your natural tendency of movement off to your dominant side. So if I were to do no adjusting whatsoever in, in the rest of my body, and I go ahead and I bring my hands up in front of me, you'll see that they're actually leaning slightly off to the dominant side. That is due to the hip. A lot of times you will hear that the solution to this is to actually turret your body forward so that you are facing in the direction of the target or the, uh, the, the direction of movement that you wanna take. I feel that this is incorrect. This is incorrect because what you're doing is you're now twisting your spine just slightly. Again, the whole point of understanding body mechanics and being very detailed is to put yourself in a stronger position, not a weaker position. How can we fix this, both placing ourselves in a stronger position and not really having to think about it all that much? If you take your dominant side hip in this fighting stance and you drive it forward just slightly, now when we go ahead and bring our hands up in front of us, we see that we have that natural alignment just in front of us, either facing our target or facing the direction of movement that we wanna go. What I want you to think about is, if I was in a fighting stance and I did not fix my hip, what would I need to do in order to take three steps forward in that forward direction? One of the first things that you would do before you took that first step forward is you would fix that hip before stepping forward with that back foot. If that's the case, then let's just go ahead and fix that hip in advance so that we don't have to think about it. What's the residual benefit to this is it aligns everything else, right? 
It aligns everything else without us having to consciously think about twisting our torso. Our to torso is already in the position that we want it to be, okay? So we've covered the hips or we've covered the feet. We've now covered the hip positioning. Let's go ahead and go up to the arms and shoulders and talk about what we want to do uh, with those in, a, in an ideal situation. First and foremost, as we go ahead and present the gun up, let's talk about what we want to avoid. What we want to avoid is we want to avoid engaging uh, more tension in our body than is absolutely necessary. When we engage more tension in our body than is absolutely necessary, you end up with a position like a lot like this right here, okay? Let me show you that from the side. It might be very, very familiar to you. And some folks believe that this is an ideal position. Why? We're locking the elbows out. We're really engaging the shoulders. Uh, we're doing a lot to mitigate recoil. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not, uh, that's not actually the case, right? When we engage uh, that amount of unnecessary tension, it's going to show itself from a marksmanship perspective and it's gonna cause us a lot of problems from the standpoint of fatigue, right? Uh, if you think about the, the difference between strength and leverage, which one has, uh, which one is gonna last a lot longer? Obviously, if I do something with strength, eventually that's going to fatigue. If I do something utilizing leverage, I'm going to be able to keep that in place much, much longer. When we put ourselves in this position here with the elbows locked out, shoulders engaged, and head dipping down forward, that is a position of strength that we're not gonna be able to keep for very long. So let's look at how we can go about fixing this and develop some leverage which is going to uh, be much more efficient for us, right? The ideal positioning uh, is going to be, first and foremost, we want to have a slight bend in the elbow, okay? The slight bend in the elbow is going to do a number of things for us. It's going to allow us to be able to absorb that recoil as the gun's going off. So in this position, if I have my elbows completely locked out, the relationship between the sight and the eye line is that the sights are definitively below my line of sight, which is gonna cause me to try to dip my head forward in order to get onto the actual sights with my eye. And it's gonna go ahead and cause me to put myself in a very poor position, breaking my posture. A better way to go about uh, positioning myself in that full presentation is to unlock those elbows and allow them to droop just slightly. I am not driving my elbows downward. I'm not making them point to the ground or anything like that. I'm just allowing them to droop. Driving your elbows downward may cause, uh, as it does for me, uh, a slight impingement in your shoulder. If any of this stuff hurts, you're probably doing it the wrong way, right? So we come up, we go ahead and unlock the elbows, we allow them to droop just slightly. What that does is that actually brings the gun up into our line of sight. We now do not have to uh, lean forward. We don't have to place our body into a weaker position to actually get on the sight itself. The other thing that unlocking the elbows and allowing the elbows to droop will do it actually affects the shoulders as well. Why is this important? If I come up here and I've got my shoulders really engaged and I go ahead and unlock the elbows and allow them to droop down, you see how they become disengaged. They only have the amount of tension that is necessary in order to hold the gun up in place. Why is having too much tension in those shoulders a problem? From a marksmanship perspective and from a performance perspective, what it's going to do is it's going to cause side to side movement as that gun goes off. Have you ever shot at or attempted to shoot at a target and ended up with a couple of shots, especially in a string fire, a couple of shots off to the right, a couple of shots off to the left? Well, that's typically caused by that side to side movement when we have those shoulders really strong and really uh, engaged. So the last element 
of body mechanics that we are going to discuss is posture. Posture is hands down one of the critical components of putting your body and keeping your body into as strong a position as possible. What do I mean by posture? What I mean by posture is looking at my body from the side when I get into my final firing position, ideally I want the tip or the top of my head to be all the way in line with my tailbone. The moment that I start breaking my posture forward and I actually start breaking my neck forward, uh, I am definitively placing my body into a much weaker position because of that break forward. This uh, really applies in pretty much any uh, positioning uh, or any situation where you might be moving as well. If you think of things from a postural standpoint, even if you're doing aggressive movement, you can lower your center of gravity and still keep really good posture or as close to that perfect posture as possible as long as you understand that it is important, right? Uh, it's when we don't understand that these things are important and we start allowing our bodies to go ahead and break forward and break that posture without really thinking about it. And we don't understand why we're having to deal with the residual effects of not having good posture. Now, one of the things that I have personally found to be really successful from a self-coaching standpoint is seeing literally hundreds of shooters have to deal with the issue of they break that posture forward because that's something that they've conditioned themselves to do. Uh, you, you all have heard me say this a number of times. The moment I tell myself, don't do A, B, C, or D, that's more than likely what my body's gonna give me, right? So if you tell yourself, don't break your posture forward, don't break your posture forward, nine times out of 10, when you go to draw that gun, you're gonna break your posture forward because that's the last thing that your mind actually heard. Instead of doing that, I want you to give yourself something else to think about, some mental marker, if you will, to keep that good posture. And that essentially is just telling yourself that your spine is a concrete column that does not move. The only thing that does move are the shoulders, the arms, and the hands to get to the gun and get the gun up into a firing position. And what you'll find is when you tell yourself that spine is a concrete column that, that does not move, you go to draw the gun and you keep that perfect posture every single time. All right. That's what I've got on body mechanics uh, from the ground up. We go in depth into body mechanics during uh, all of our performance courses, our RDS course, uh, as well as our AIWB. We, we touch on body mechanics quite a bit uh, as well, uh, a little bit more in depth than we had the opportunity to go through here. But that is the gist of body mechanics. I hope it helps you. I hope you put this stuff, uh, go ahead and implement it, uh, put it to work in your own training and practice. Uh, and as always, remember, continue to follow the process. Train, prepare, prevail. I'm out.